everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part six of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In this video, I'll demonstrate how the grid works in Logic, and I'll also explain the different grid values. This is an essential part of not just producing music and editing, but also really basic functions like placing and moving elements and regions around on your timeline. So it's really important for you to understand how the grid works before we jump into actual music making, which we will get to in part seven. I'll demonstrate most of the grid snap features, and I'll also demonstrate the difference between using an absolute grid snap versus a relative grid snap. I also wanna take a moment to tell you about the sponsor for this video, Boombox, who I'm very happy to have on board as a long-term sponsor. They have been absolutely essential in making this new series possible. As a producer and mixing engineer who primarily works remotely from my home studio, I really appreciate Boombox.io for keeping my projects and client feedback organized and all in one place. I can batch upload uncompressed audio files, I can invite collaborators to listen and leave timestamped feedback on my tracks and create different versions of a project and ultimately helps me get the annoying parts of my job done quicker so I can spend more time on being creative as a music producer. But don't take my word for it. Try it out for yourself. You can sign up today at boombox.io and get 10 gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so to demonstrate the grid, I'm going to start by adding just a basic kick drum loop to my project. So I'm going to go up here, open up the loop browser, and I'm just going to search up kick and the one I'm looking for is this one here called Angelic Solo Kick. I can click on the loop to audition it. And I can click again to stop. So what I'll do is drag this onto an existing audio track, or you can drag this below your lowest track to create a new audio track. So I'll go ahead and just delete this other audio track, and then I'll zoom in. Now this is what's called a four on the floor kick drum loop, meaning that there's one kick hit per quarter note or per beat. Now, when you're in 4-4 four, four time, this means that you have four beats per measure or four beats per bar. So this number here is bar one, bar two, bar three, bar four. Those are your bar line numbers, and you can see that there are four kicks per bar. And if I turn on my metronome by clicking here, you'll hear that the metronome syncs up with the kick drum. So why is the grid so important? Well, the grid in any DAW shows you musical timing values and serves as a reference for tempo, rhythm, quantizing, MIDI notes, etc. Without the grid, everything you placed on the timeline would just be a free-for-all with no reference for where you are in the natural beat or groove of a song. So you can see the grid lines up here in the timeline ruler, as I like to call it. The grid is divided into four different types of values. You have bars, like I was saying before. These are what musicians who read sheet music would call a measure of music. So this is bar one or measure one, measure two, measure three, measure four, or bar one, two, three, and four. Those two terms essentially mean the same thing. And as I said before, in four, four time, you have four beats per bar. So let's just zoom in here a bit. So this is one bar right here. This is the first bar. And that bar is separated into four beats. So you have bar one, bar one, beat two, bar one, beat three, bar one, beat four, bar two, bar two, beat two, beat three, beat four, etc. So we have bars, beats, and then we have divisions. These are these other grid lines in between the beats. Divisions are just musical subdivisions, and they vary depending on what grid value you have set. And I'll come back to this later on in the video. But by default, these are set to 16th notes, and there are four 16th notes in a quarter note or four 16th notes in a beat. So again, if you think about this as one bar, you can think about this as one beat or quarter note, and each one of these smaller subdivisions is a 16th note. So we have 16th note, one, two, three, four, beat two, one, two, three, four. In between the grid divisions, there's another type of value called a tick. A tick is a MIDI-based value that divides beats into smaller subdivisions so that you can place regions, notes, or other elements in between the grid divisions if need be. 
You can observe this by turning off your grid snap up here. So I'll just click here, this turns off the grid snap. And now when I move a region around, you'll see it does not snap to the grid lines. Whereas before, if I set this to division, now this snaps to the grid lines. You can see it only snaps to those 16th note divisions. Likewise, if I set this to beat, this only snaps to the beats. And if I set this to bar, it only snaps to the bar lines. Now, by default, this is probably set to smart mode, which actually snaps to multiple different values, but we'll come back to that in just a bit. But to demonstrate ticks, I'm gonna go ahead and just turn off snap mode. There is a shortcut for this. You can toggle the grid snap on or off by pressing Command G. So you can see here it's on, Command G, now it's off. Command G, now it's on, and it'll go back to the last grid snap mode that you were using. So let me go ahead and just turn this off, Command G, and now when I drag this region around, you can see that I can snap to divisions in between the 16th notes. Now, a way to observe this is to look at the LCD display up here, and if you're in one of these other modes like Beats and Project, you're going to want to switch over to Custom View for this. And the value you're looking for is this right here. Now, by default, this is gonna follow your playhead position, but it also is applied to regions that you're moving around. So what you can see is as I drag the playhead or if I drag a region, that playhead position or that region position changes. So right now it's at one, 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 bar one, beat one, division one, tick one. As I drag over, you'll see the tick value start to creep up. And then once I get to division two, you'll see that it now says division two, tick 31. If I keep going, now I'm in division three, tick 43. Division four, tick 49. Now I move into the second beat. So now I'm at bar one, beat two, division one, tick 25. If I move way over here, now I'm at bar two, beat two, division three, tick 133. So there are 960 ticks per beat. So between here and here, there are 960 ticks that are really tiny subdivisions of the beat. And in between each of these divisions, there are 240 ticks. Likewise, if I use a snap mode like division, and I move my region around, what you'll see is this only shows division and beat and bar values, and the tick value always stays on one, because I'm not moving the region in between the grid divisions. Likewise, if I change this over to beat, now it only snaps to the beats, and you can see that the grid division value just stays on one, because now we're just showing bars and beats for the positional data. And if I go to bar grid snap, only the very first value will change because we're only snapping to bar lines. And again, like I said before, this also applies to the playhead position, and this also applies to the cycle range. So as you move around the cycle range or adjust the left and right locator position, they will snap to the grid based on what grid snap mode you have selected. So you can see if I adjust the right locator, now it's only snapping to divisions. Whereas if I turn off my grid snap, now I can freely place the locator anywhere on the grid. So again, this affects region placement, it affects the playhead, and it also affects the locators or cycle range. And later on, we'll find that it also affects things like MIDI note placement. Okay, so let's take a moment and go over some of these other grid snap modes. I've already shown you bar, beat, and divisions. There's also a ticks grid snap mode. And this one doesn't really seem any different than just turning off the grid until you really zoom in on the waveform. So I'm just gonna zoom way in. And if I use my ticks snap, you'll see that the position of the waveform or the position of the region is adjusted in ticks. So I can move the region around by one tick at a time. Whereas if I just turn off the grid, I can now move things freely even in between the tick values. So the resolution of Logic's tracks area timeline for editing is actually higher than the MIDI resolution of 960 ticks per beat. Likewise, if I use this one at the bottom, samples, this will actually snap to the sampling points in the waveform. 
To demonstrate this, I'm gonna duplicate this solo kick track. You can actually hold Option and drag this down, and this will not only duplicate the track, it'll also duplicate the region that's on the track. And if I zoom in even further, I'm gonna zoom in as far as I can go, you'll see that the waveform is kind of stepped. Each one of these little stepped points is a sample point or a sampling point. So now if I'm using Samples Grid Snap, as I move around this other waveform, you can see that I can snap it to each of those sampling points. Whereas if I just turn the grid snap off, now I can actually move the region in between those sampling points. And the last two are frames and quarter frames. These are only going to be used when you're working on audio for film or video. What this does is it snaps to frames based on the set frame rate in Logic. So you can see that it's not snapping to a musical grid, it's snapping to each of the frames based on the frame rate that is set in Logic. And it's usually by default set to 25 frames per second. There's one last value that's actually the default value and that's smart mode. What smart mode does is it'll actually snap to bars, beats, and divisions, and it'll also allow you to move regions in between the grid divisions. So if I move over to beat three here, you'll see that it actually does snap to beat three. If I want to move to division three of beat two, it snaps to the division, or I can get in between the divisions as well. So using smart mode is really handy when you don't want to commit to just one grid snap value. And there's a cool little modifier key for this as well. If you start moving a region and then hold control while using smart mode, this will actually bypass the grid snap and you'll be able to move the region around freely. And this modifier key also works with some of these other grid snap values. For example, if I set this to division, when I use it normally, it just snaps to the grid divisions. But if I click and drag and then hold control, this will actually raise the resolution a bit. And now I can get in between some of these grid values. And that modifier key will work for almost all of these grid snap values, but the result is going to be different for each one of these. However, when you're working on musical projects, the vast majority of the time, you're just gonna be working in smart, bar, beat, or division. These other ones I almost never use unless I'm working on video projects. I'm gonna turn off my grid snap and I'm gonna pull this over here somewhere in between two of these grid values. And I want to demonstrate next the difference between an absolute grid and a relative grid. So you see there's two different options here, snap regions to absolute value versus snap regions to relative value. So if I keep this on absolute value and I set this to say beat, when I drag this region, it's going to snap to the nearest beat wherever I drag it on the timeline. It's not going to maintain its relative position on the grid in between two grid divisions like it originally was. So it's gonna snap directly to a beat on the grid. And likewise, if I set this to bar, it's gonna snap to the nearest bar wherever I drag it. And if I go to division, it'll do the same thing. It'll snap directly to the grid divisions. However, if I switch this over to relative value, let's set this back to beat. Now, as I move this region around, it moves by one beat, but you can see that it maintains its relative position within the beat. Likewise, if I were to zoom out a bit and switch this over to bar, I can move this around by a bar, but it maintains its relative position within the bar. It's not actually snapping to the bar line. However, if I needed this to snap directly to a bar line, I could just switch back to an absolute value and then snap it directly to a bar line. So that's the difference between using an absolute value and a relative value. Right now at this point with just a simple project with a couple loops, you may not see the point of having a relative grid value, but as we start building out musical arrangements, this will become really important as you try to move around different elements of a song and keep their relative position in a bar or within a beat or within a division. Okay, so that's the snap values and absolute and relative grid. Next, I wanna talk about the actual grid divisions themselves and point out some other grid division values that you can use. So by default in Logic, the division of the grid is set to 16th notes. So again, you have four 16th notes per beat. 
you can change that grid division up here in the custom view of the LCD display by clicking here, and you can change this from slash 16 to something else. Now, if you've studied basic music theory or music fundamentals and rhythm at all, you'll probably already know what a quarter note is, an eighth note, a 16th note, a 32nd note. So some of these are pretty self-explanatory. A slash 16 grid is a 16th note grid. A slash eight grid is an eighth note grid. So now within my one bar of music here, I have grid values that are eighth notes. They're a little bit longer, so I only have two divisions for each beat. Likewise, I could just make the grid division a quarter note, and now I have no grid divisions in between the beats. So the grid itself is a quarter note. Or I could go higher with faster divisions like a 32nd note, where we now have eight grid divisions in between each beat, and you can keep going up and up with 64th notes and 128th notes. I rarely use grid division values higher than 32nd notes, but it does happen sometimes. Now, what about all these other values like slash 6, slash 12, slash 24? There's really no such thing as a 6th note or a 12th note or a 24th note. But what these represent are what are called triplets. So slash 6 is actually a quarter note triplet. Slash 12 is an 8th note triplet. Slash 24 is a 16th note triplet and so forth and so on. Let me go back to slash 12 to demonstrate this. With slash 12, each beat is broken up into three equal subdivisions, so eighth note triplets. And there are 12 of these in a bar, hence why they're called slash 12 up here. If I go back to eighth notes, you'll see now we only have two divisions per beat. These triplet grid values come in really handy when you're trying to write a song or produce a beat that has more of a triplet or even like a swung feel to it. Two great examples of a straight feel song versus a triplet feel song by the same artist in a similar style are Billie Jean and The Way You Make Me Feel by Michael Jackson. Billie Jean has a straight eighth note feel where the bass line is just playing straight eighth notes. So it goes bum, 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 bum. So there's two notes per beat, and you can sort of count it like this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So again, you're dividing each beat into two subdivisions. Now, if we take a song like The Way You Make Me Feel, it also has a very memorable bass line, but this bass line is a triplet feel bass line. Boom, 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 one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. So each beat is divided into three instead of two, which gives the song a different type of groove, a more interesting groove and feel to it because of that triplet grid, because of that triplet feel. Okay, so that is the grid in Logic Pro the grid snap modes, as well as an explanation of the difference between an absolute grid value and a relative grid value. I highly recommend before you start creating any music in Logic for the first time, drop in a loop like this in a new project and just get familiar with how the grid works, moving regions around with the grid, and just kind of get a working feel for it. Because just like the edit tools, which we'll be using all the time in the future, the grid snap values and the grid itself will be an essential part of composing any song or putting together any musical project or beat. You have to understand how the grid works in your DAW because ultimately your entire rhythmic structure and groove of your song is based on the grid. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.